station and it, it's down to 13 foot elevation and we are doing work right now that's going to have this up to what's what is it? Uh, 17, 17 uh, by hurricane season and then we have this other area here again pump station wall that is down to uh, let's say about uh, 12 feet that we're going to have most of it all the way up uh, to about a 17 18 foot elevation and so that's a good news. I'm going to show you some of the slides that we're, that we're doing, uh, working toward that area. Um, and the reason that we behind the two spots is that they are some walls that are well built. There's A-frames and there's splash pad on the back. So if it's over the top, we might get a loser. And we went to other places that were low, low but we raised them when they might get over the top because they weren't strong. But now we're going to get back to those spots and by this article, we'll have it. Uh, where, where is the second one? Right? Well, one is the Golden Bear Plus Station wall. Oh, okay. And the other is the crawfish farm wall by uh, Schweiss's farm. <coughs> Those are the two whole spots in the lowest areas and more happening to accomplish this. Okay, here. do we have the information we need when we go, go to bid on that one? That we'll have that included in a bid? Which one? Which one? Do you have the, the, the deal on the on the John, that's John. John has the one that's on the bottom. My question is. When we run into the same problem with that one as, as the Golden Meadow one, where we have to go back again and add a change order to increase the amount because we didn't have the uh, that included, I assume, in the bid. Yeah, well, I don't know exactly. No, you know, you John, doesn't know, uh, John, John doesn't know the, 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 the uh, particular point that was in the proper spot. Uh, okay, well, does anybody know the answer to my question? John, no, 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 he you don't know the answer to that yet. No. He is. Good. He's assuming he's got all the, the design correct and there won't be any uh, last minute change, but you never know. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to avoid that. Yeah. I'm asking a question I'm asking. Okay. Okay, this is the area of uh, the only form. This is where it makes uh, we have that acute angle coming from uh, the levee that goes between globally formed and Bristol Canal. Uh, and that's it moving out. And we're raising that up to 13 foot elevation, uh, 13 and a half. It had fallen below that level. And uh, so again, a, a spread in that area. And uh, we've gone in and, and uh, cleaned out all the way to the water line. We have an exterior water canal in that area. But uh, the contractor has been doing good work in getting it up. Our people have been helped shaping the top of the levee and, and bringing it to the elevation. And again, you'll have. Uh, improved protection of the upcoming hurricane season. That's looking due east. 
And again, you show the, the material that we placed on there. And it's, it's uh, coming out real good. The material is good. Really, uh, and uh, I've been working that out. Here's the area at the Golden Meadow Pump Station for the wall. The, uh, the dark part, which was put in by the Corps of Engineers, we had requested that they put it up to 16 feet. Uh, they didn't do what we requested. They put it at 13. We have our levees out there up to 17 feet. And um, so we're going in with this, and then we're going to go from that to 13 to a 17 foot elevation in this area. A uh, tremendous improvement. It's again already a strong area. We're just adding more elevation just in case. Yeah? What is the cement that they're breaking? Well, that was the transition the core put in. Mm -hmm. The transition between the levee oh. and the horse structures so that if you had over top, it, it, it wouldn't erode away. Okay, yeah, so we're going to have to reestablish something. It might be Gobi Mass, but we're going we're to put uh, something so back gonna, in for those transition areas. So we're going to be busting out this concrete. We're going to raise the levee right. to uh, 18, and then we're going to put Gobi Mass over the top. Yeah. Thank you. Again, just different shots showing the, the construction work. You are very confident about uh, this handling, whatever I for. That if it's over top, it will be able to withstand and once the water gets down. You look at Hurricane Laura, uh, it pushed at Grand Chenier a 19 foot elevation. So you expect to see a couple of feet of water go over here, but uh, the bottom line is that uh, once the water goes down, you don't have a hole in the system and, and no more water enters. And this is the area from Bullet Camp looking north. And uh, again, we're going to an 18 foot elevation. There's a lot of open water on, on that side. Of the, and the uh, very islands aren't real connected on the terrible and Timbalea side. So uh, a storm that uh, would come from the southwest to the northeast, uh, that percentage is not a lot. But if you have one like that and hitting basically with the iron going to Lockport, uh, we could see. Uh, uh, Tremendous amount of water on this side, and that's why we're going up an 18 foot elevation here. And again, uh, contractors, uh, the GIS is working out here. Again, we first uh, moved the material from the back of the, the super property to this side, and now we're taking that material and forming the levee. Uh, this goes again from Bullet Camp to Paul Dufresne's farm. The grass area is already about 20 foot elevation, and now we're adding. Uh, the rest is going to 18. And you can see on the outside, you have a lot of open water in that area, but ConocoPhillips, Ducks Unlimited, the parish, CPRA, provided funding to get terraces. And those terraces, of course, are there for environmental purposes, but they, they keep that everyday wave action that can erode the toe of the levee. By having these terraces, they're going to protect the total area. It's a good benefit for all of us. Here's a contractor taking the material from the water canal, stacking it up, lets it dry, and then the other two uh, excavators will come back later and lift them and put them on top of the way. Those are the excavators work on the outside, uh, forming the terraces. We've had great cooperation with Conoco Phillips uh, and Ducks Unlimited. I mean, the, the biggest open water areas we have, they're going to have covered three quarters of our property. Wendell, mm -hmm. uh, you say that they, they had those uh, 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 wave action barriers, terraces. Are there any areas where the tool of the levee is eroding that we would have to look at maybe if we can't get someone else that we might have to build terraces there? Yeah, well, we, we've given a little money for some previous terrace work, so, so we're looking at that. Um, and then we have one in places that that was even hard to do, and we put the plastic sheet pile to protect the total levee. But so, from, from based on Marina South, that's a, it's all open water up, up there level. Well, no, it's, a, it's a based on north that, that we have. No, south. Well, we, this is north. Right. Well, that's all north, but, but I'm saying. Based on the south, you have. Well, well, based on south right away, it's not too, too bad. When you go further past just below Basel, it gets open, but that's where the, the contractors have put in a lot of those uh, uh, terraces in that area. We have one, I think there's one big area left to the south of Basel, and one big area north of Basel. So they, they, they planning they, to put they, terraces? Is anybody planning to put terraces there? They, they are. They are. They are. Yeah, I've talked to the guy out there with Ducks Unlimited, and after they finish this particular job, they're going to move just south of the, the launch, 
Uh-huh. And then that open area will put more terraces. So that should about take care of a problem, a problem there. Mm -hmm. That'll be later this year. Yeah. I don't know exactly the extent or anything, but that's what he told me. Okay, well, you keep us informed exactly what's going to be going on there. So yeah. if we need to do something, we might have to do it. I'd hate to see the total that it erode, and then we've got to rebuild it again when we can prevent it from eroding in the first place. Mm -hmm. okay. but, but when we get to uh, before we have to go and rebuild, we'll put plastic sheet bottom as a, as a large good. And we keep a close eye on on where it gets to the point that we're losing so that could be a stabilizing issue for the levee. And uh, uh, we handled at, at the, the southern part of our system on the east side. We had a terrible problem. We tried several different things, and we have an inside borrow that's extremely large and wide. We couldn't do terraces there, and that's where we started putting the plastic sheet pile, and it has worked out real well for us in, in that area. <coughs> yeah, just give some more shots of them doing their work. Uh, that's inside the system, stacked up. I'll come back for that later. This is the, the lead excavator. Bring stuff up. This is on the outside with brand new terraces. They're working in about uh, three feet of water. And it's coming up real well. Uh, again, expected to do a good job for us. And this is part of what we've talked about for years, all the uh, uh, marsh apron. Uh, I've opened water formed along the levee. We've tried to replace it. We've had some marsh projects. Uh, we have these terrace projects and we'll continue trying to get the environmental work on the outside that will do both to take the total area and, and get them the environmental benefits. And we've had great cooperation again from uh, CPRE, uh, Ducks Unlimited, Dr. Phelps is the biggest landowner. And this area, this area right here, you see that little marsh strip? Uh, that's what called the lower management. We were, we were one there in Discovery Pipeline had to do some mitigation, and they're the ones who paid for that strip of marsh because it would have been water all the way to the door of the levee. Back in 2002, that was done. And that little strip of marsh sells out pretty well. But they're still doing the, the, uh, the environmental work on the outside. Now this is the work mitigation for Section K uh, in, in, uh, for Morganza. And uh, this uh, used to be water course. It put in the sand and with the low tide, it's all exposed. But this is going to turn into some pretty nice marsh. There's the containment levee that they had. They've cut holes in it, and uh, we should see the uh, grass go pretty soon. This is up against the levee on false form that CPRA had approved, and I think they brought it up to a nine foot elevation. And actually, this containment levee here, this is the overflow, and it, it's going to make a, a probably another four or five acres outside of the containment. That will have a little bit uh, more more shot, so that corn is going to be well taken care of. Uh, now this is Grand Bayou, this is Grand Bayou project. You can see this is going to form the wall that goes into the bank. They're driving the batter piles to support the Grand Bayou floodgate structure, this the receiving uh, site. And again, here's the levee going down to Bonnochamp, so the flood protection is on this side. It comes to the floodgate here and jump to the other side. This is heading north, and then it's going to cut across to the uh, false form, the corner, the corner of false form. And this is the construction of the gate in Morgan City. Uh, it's a floating gate. Uh, it's designed to pump water in. You remove the gate in place, you pump water in, you sink it, and it stays there for the duration of the storm. And when the storm threat is finished, you float it back up and put it back in its, uh, its uh, staging area. Uh, Red, any, any comments? Y'all been doing this for a number of years. You can see the tubes in it to allow, if you have higher water on the inside, let water out yeah. with flap gates. That's actually bigger than the other gates we have. I think those are six foot little through tubes with flap. Yeah, if, the water, if, they, if it needs to be open, then the water's higher on one side. You open that up and let it be quiet on both sides. You can have it. It's a whole lot different than working sector gates when you open and close as you need to. These take a lot of time and planning, and you got to do it right to uh, avoid any problems. But they, they do work. They're a lot cheaper, but they do work to keep the water up. Any can other comments? Go, can you go back one slide, man? Sure, okay. Can go back. Yeah. So, so that the, the, the levee on the right hand side of that slide, right? So that goes all the way down to Point of Chance. So that's basically a mitigation levee. Uh, footprint where your mitigation has been for years, right? Been there for 
whatever, 25 years at this point, right, Wendell? Yeah, 86. So, so, so now you have almost a continuous levee from that point all the way to Pornishan of varying elevations, right? Uh, the board may remember that, that, what, a couple of years ago we did that big dredge job where we put a bunch of stuff on the bank. In the last six months, we've shaped all that stuff. It's been sitting up for two years, so we got to where we're shaping it. I mean, frankly, it looks really pretty in that part of the world, and it's really high, probably about a 10 or maybe even 12. As you go further south, some areas are not nearly as high, but it is really a flood, it really is a flood protection structure now compared to what it was six months ago. Steve, if I remember correctly, at one time, that, that levee had gates but uh, beautiful. It, it does. Still in there? They're still in there, that's right. There's two water control structures. And again, that's something, as they build up the levee, the street you they both need to be replaced. And right now, there's a submission to replace them with some, what's the height on those? 18 things? foot. 18 foot water control structures. So we're applying for some money from the state to hopefully replace both of those to about 18 foot elevation. Yeah, but it will still be in the set to allow for more Yeah, they yeah, do, because, because wild and fisheries managing that, yeah. they manage the marsh on the inside. Yeah. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, how often does, will this gate have to open? How much? Well, when there's those oh, three, there, how much there, traffic do we have there? Not, not a ton of traffic, but there's a lot of sports fishing. Mm -hmm. there, there, there's some commercial because of the discovery, right? The back of the discovery once in a while. Not, yeah. not much anymore, but yes, yeah, go on. But that, that's why you have to keep it open. But they'll operate it once a month to test everything, and then hopefully just for a storm. For a storm. Otherwise, it's still open. Otherwise, it's open. Yeah, right. Okay. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Right about over here, it's going to take a hard right and go toward uh, all the French farm and of course to our levy system. You can see we left the uh, the sandbags from the temporary structure. We had them stacked on top of the <coughs> east bank of uh, Grand Bayou, which is bottom of L. So those are going to be removed as the contractor builds up. That may be two years from now before they, it gives us a little bit extra elevation on top of it. Yeah, just in case somebody asks, you know, right now, by this hurricane season, that board should be here. Oh, okay. okay. And the system might not be completed, the whole system, but it's going to be in a situation that they can sink the board and reduce the flooding through this canal. Now, there will always be this opening here until the levee is constructed. But what you've done by having this levee up to a good height, having this blocked off, You've knocked out a flow of a good 70% of the, the water. So like anything, if the storm's blowing, it's going to change direction. Hopefully, it doesn't accumulate enough water to flood it. But if you have slowed down the, uh, the, the flooding that would take place inside the system. And Reggie, uh, a couple of storms, you had different water elevations at Pornoshan Floodgate, right? Yeah, the, uh, the temporary floodgate, you had about a plus four and a half to five in Pornishan, and then the water only rolls eight inches in the intercoastal intervals. So, so the, the temporary board... But the differential in, in Pornishan, outside and inside, was how much? I think it was over three feet. For Barry, it was, uh, if Barry was compromised, it was uh, about eight foot, right? Right, for Barry. And on the inside, would it compromise, it got to I think about four and a half, about four, four. So even when it's not closed, you know, it held back. It took a long time for it to get to four on the inside. Uh, we did the water on the inside this time only got to uh, less than two for this it, form. With a six six foot served on the outside, six and a half. But that's the issue. Without this having anything. It slowed the water because it had to go all the way up here and then come around. And you close the most efficient way of the water to get in by closing right by it. So they'll have this opening, but it's a tremendous improvement by this hurricane season, even with that opening. Because the thing that's nice is that you don't have houses right on the other side of the alignment. Mm -hmm. So this is ponding area. So the more ponding area, the more water it takes to get in to cause a problem. Yeah. Oh. 
talk to the <laughs> Okay, uh, this last meeting we got a call about the Golden Bell pump station for the wall. We needed to, uh, but the, the engineer said we needed to put a plane in to stiff the one that was there. Uh, that was going to be a $26,000 uh, cost, and we didn't want to delay construction. Uh, we have an authorization that the board approved that when there's a situation like this, allow the person to spend up to fifty thousand dollars if it would save time and money for protection. And so President Kelly went ahead and agreed to twenty six thousand uh, on the engineer's request to do so. So I just want to report to you all that we had done that. Uh, we have agreement with uh, Brent Island. I would like you all to approve uh, an agreement where uh, this will allow us to, to dig. Uh, on his property in a borrow pit. And uh, in there he asked for $2,500 since he had stock fish in there and we're going to cost a bunch for the fish. Uh, but how many uh, cubic yards be taken out? I think it's like 28,000. Yeah. And so that's not, that's uh, good good cooperation between the landowner and us. And, and uh, you know, we're talking a little bit of problem, we're talking a little bit, but we're going to, that's a tremendous amount of material, 28,000 for. Uh, I trade off my twenty five hundred dollars on that. But I would like you to okay to have the letter there. Okay, you heard a recommendation of our, our general manager to okay this agreement between Brent Allen and his company and the Levy District on this wrap agreement. If you don't wish it, you move on up by a money. Second by Mac. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All no. Motion carried. Okay, and uh the watershed initiative is $1.3 billion that the state of Louisiana has to deal with watershed issues. Uh, we put in uh, a proposal for about $5 million to help us pay for the old lot. Uh, I had a meeting with uh, Chet and Archie and uh, our engineers and to uh, write to some letters to uh, the government, government assistance to Again, support us in doing that, and uh, I'm also talking to uh, uh, Mayor Mayor Bozier or Golden Bell, because all of this is beneficial to all the communities in South Louisiana, in South Dakota. So uh, we'll be sending letters out in, in support of that, and I'll uh, have some discussions with people with CPRA, and they believe it's a good project. So there's a chance we can get that money if we do get that money, and we get the permit from the core, uh, we will be able to build uh, that structure and maybe get started this year. Hmm. Uh, cash flow is organic to the Gulf. We talked about it last meeting. You know, with the emergency work that was done, that was a million dollar cost there. With the building of the Grand uh, uh, Bayou floodgate, we have some million dollars going. And so that's a flow through. Right now, we, last month we lost $3 million. But I, I got in touch with Reggie and Mitch and also the state CPRA and said, look, we can get this done, but once we sign that check, you got to process that money quickly. So we'll have our money for our projects along with some of the other projects. And it's worked out very well to this point. We uh, we like three million last time the money came back in. Right now we're at four million. We expect it to come back in time before we're not causing any problems for our bills. So it's working out real well. We just keep a close eye on it to make sure it continues to do so. The D South uh, foam flood wall, uh, we had some low bids on it and uh, should have construction sorted about one time we think. I think mid March. Mid March, beginning and of March. And you did get the letter from CPRA today, right? You sent the email, yes. Okay, so they okay it, and we'll have a signing this week. We're gonna, week. Yeah, we're going to send it out to the contractors to sign tomorrow. Great, great. And so that's that other little spot, and should be able to have it in place uh, for the next hurricane season. Uh, Erosion will be inside the borough canal, and we've done some work. Uh, but we. Yeah, some people complain about it, but you know, we can't, people sometimes want to go to the back. There's two reasons it's causing the erosion. Is they're not letting the grass grow. There's two reasons. Like some people actually spray and try to kill the grass and the canal, or you're going to get erosion by doing that. Like we cut, the, the cut that we made was set in a way to let the, the emergence and submergence come kind of grow up and have that protect the edge. Wherever there's no cattle going in the area or it's being cut or sprayed, we're not having any erosion. And we don't have any erosion on our side. So we just encourage everybody, don't, don't go out and spray the, the emerging grass that along the work and out is not going to crop it. You just let the natural grass grow, uh, should stop the erosion. We don't have erosion anywhere else. Mm -hmm. 
the place where it's tree and there's no body do anything back there, we don't have any road conditions. And on our side, there's no road conditions. So we just we warn people to, to uh, not, do, not do the spraying and keep it, the grass cut, uh, cut too much. Uh, installation flood gate rules, good news. Uh, the Leon Terrier lock is a little You know, we just have a flood gate right now. You know, we took the gates out. That makes it a lot. Contract is doing great. Uh, and he said that should there be no changes February, the week of February 22nd, oh. he should be able to put it back in. That's great news. Cool. And we've been very fortunate with the south, the way the north wind blowing, keeping the tide here. We're back in Bensonville, we got a call last week to close the gate that's there to help hold some water in so people can do some work. It's a unique situation. And I just realized I can solve all the erosion problems and all the flood problems. We just need to have a north wind every day. Mm -hmm. We had that. <laughs> We take care of everything. Yeah. <laughs> Good luck on that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, yeah. you hope for the best. You know. right. uh, uh, we talked about the Grand Bayou board structure. And uh, we, last year, you know, we have all, all, all two tractors and two 15 foot bush hogs. And we really didn't quite keep up with the grass last year. And now that we, you know, we've been working on 10 miles and 11 here on the west side, and a lot of that's going to be in the thing. So we were talking about, well, we, you know, we've never stopped cutting, so we were talking about maybe needing a third tractor. Uh, but then we thought it might be more cost effective and we could test out getting a contract tractor. A contract? <laughs> so, so we started thinking about that, and we were, uh, unless there's an objection, we're going to go and move forward with, with uh, we had some some quotes, and we'll take the little quotes, and we'll go ahead and, and try that for this year. And that track will work with our tractor and see if it works out to our advantage like we think it will. Again, with no objection, we'll move forward with that. Thank you. And that's all I have. Okay, any questions of our gentleman? Yeah, I was seeing you go with Matt, they're starting to reshape the road and get ready to. To, uh, to over overlay it again and then be blocking all the uh, the culverts going to the bias, so that's great. That's great news. You know, we, we, we've been talking to people a long time. You know, you, a well-formed road usually is a, it's, it's hung back in the middle, but in Golden Meadow you have the wall on one side and you have some drainage for rainfall that gets between the top of the road. And that makes sense, but the water in the bayou is so high now. It's high all the time. Right. And that's why we have to keep the uh, uh, the water the level and our flood gate are a lot, to a point three or less. Now with them raising the middle and sloping it toward the wall, they may raise as much as another three tenths of a foot, maybe four. When we get to half a foot, well that's that's kind of normal time. We won't have to operate our, our system cool. mm -hmm. So that that's gonna be a big asset. And uh, we've been talking to the highway department, you know. We think because of subsidence and some sea level rise that's going on, that really that might be the approach we need to take on all of our roads. You know, it, you know we have a few couple hundred feet that drain toward the bay and the rest toward the back. Well, we may need to look at the bank of the bay and no longer look at draining at all into the bay because it brings more water and takes out because of the high tide and subsidence that's going on. That from now on, we seal the bay bank keep on raising the road and to be part of the flood protection. I'm not talking about all, from St. Bernard to Cameron, I think we need to at least look at it. Might not fit in all situations, but I think uh, a lot of our areas with the sort of science issue that we have, that that's not be the new way we have to design roads in South Louisiana. Thank does, you. Does, anybody, does anybody remember how much the flood water in Golden Meadows was estimated to cost at the time? John ought to know. <laughs> Come on, John. John is just a rope. Like that old. John was a big rope. Five, yeah. six million. I would think it's a few million, yes, sir. Yeah, we're doing it. Yeah. Could you give us an estimate, in one of you, what you would be looking at to take from the Golden Meadow flood wall, have a, a modified flood wall, maybe not as high as the Golden Meadow one, but coming towards the Galliana Bridge? Because there's that little area there mm -hmm. that water comes over the highway constantly. If we could find funds or get the state start looking at building sort of the same thing, but not, not as elaborate as a gold medal, because you don't need anything that high. You can just maybe lift it a couple of feet or foot and a half. Mm -hmm. I think that would take care of That would solve a lot of our old <coughs> sort of problems with, in the Bible. Well, we actually did a study in 1983 to do exactly what you talked about. 
And because of the issue with the gulps and because of the landowner issue and access to the body issue, mm -hmm. uh, we look at the floodgates and making lobsters was the best solution. Mm -hmm. But what we're saying now is that when you know you got a whole area like that and you come to do the road, you raise it the high you need to to make everything consistent. You drain to the back. You, you drain to the back. No more culverts underneath the road. And any low area like you have just north of the corporation that is, you know, they're trying to do six house. That's yeah. always, it always goes there first. Yeah. When they do road construction, they go lift those areas to match the rest of the road. So the road now becomes your levy system right. to divide and raises and, and use our road. When we repair our roads, we end up getting better flood protection at the same time. Right. That's a concept. And, and they're, they're, they're listening. And I was shocked. That, you know, it looks like they, they're really doing gold and metal, so it's going to be a good example of the way it operates. Before the senior, they're right next to the school. Oh, good, good. So they get rid of the well, let's see when the, when, when the first heavy rain comes and we see how <laughs> effective it is. Yeah. Okay. Uh, CPRA, uh, Daniel, you're on the line? Daniel Daniel's on the line, but he may have to unmute himself. Well, then we'll skip and go on to the uh, Corps of Engineers to work on the report. Project Engineer, we're going to come back to Daniel later. Project Engineers, Joe. Okay, on um, section E South, uh, grading and shaping, low land construction is the contract. They got a few things here for you. He's complete with the project. Uh, so we have uh, the change order number two, which is adding 59 days of additional time. Uh, that's due to hurricanes Delta and Zeta and also COVID issues, hiring people and, and being able to work. Um, so there's no, no additional cost for this, it's just, it's just contract time. So you'd have to approve that. Okay. And uh, then we have the application number 14, an amount of $3,000 even. We do recommend you approve that. And also we have a certificate of substantial completion, yeah, which closes all three contract. In, in one motion. Ah. Can all three of you carry in one motion? No. All three in separate motion. Okay, on the first one, the change order had, had 259 days to the contract for low land construction as recommended by engineers. No wish, gentlemen. Moved by Keith, taken by Rowan. In discussion, all the same signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carried. Okay, on the matter of the certificate of substantial completion, your wishes. Move by roll and second by roll. Any discussion? All the table signified by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion carried. Okay, their request number 14 in the amount of $3,800 for low land construction. Your wishes. Move by your second by Is it three or 3,800? Three. Three. It's 3,800. 3,800. That's it. That's right. Sorry. Oh, that's right. Yeah. That is right. I think it's 3.8 million. No, okay. no it's 3,000. I said 3,000, but it's 3,800. 3,800. Yeah. Okay, I move by Monty's second by Keith. Uh, wishes. Okay, on our E-North levy improvements, uh, Grand Shipyard is the contractor. They're hauling uh, dirt on site window show pictures in the slideshow. Um, we tried to get a, a, a change order on this one also for additional time. He's going to have to have that. Um, he's, we're working through with him right now on that. We're also talking about adding some work to his project. Uh, there is some opportunity to get more dirt to add on to the levees in the Cloverly Farms area. We're working with Wendell and them to give us a price to do that. Come back later day to present that. To yes, sir. Okay. We have pay application number nine. In the amount of fifty-seven thousand five hundred forty-eight dollars and fifty-seven cents, we recommend you approve that. Okay, you read the recommendation of engineers to pay GIS. Pay request number nine. The amount of fifty-seven thousand five hundred forty-eight dollars and fifty-seven cents. Your wishes. Move mm -hmm. by Mac. Seconded by Roman. Any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carried. On a D South levy improvements, SBL construction is a contractor. So he, he's finished moving all of the stockpile material as of today. And uh, he's going to start grading and shaping the area where he had stockpile material and start cleaning up. So we'll get with you and Drake to go look at it one time and make sure we're satisfied with how he's leaving the job once he's finished. Um, we do have pay application number 11, 
in the amount of uh, $1,562.75. We recommend you approve that. Okay, you read the recommendation of our engineers to pay uh, SDL $1,562.75 for pay request number 11. Mm -hmm. I, second by Roland. I have a question on this. Will we be getting any more pay, uh, pay requests from him or that will be the end of it? You're going to have one more pay request from him to close out the job. Okay, gentlemen, we're ready to vote. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Okay, um, on the desal levy, grading, and shaping, SBL is also the contractor, but he hasn't really been working too much on this job, so there's no pay application this month. He's been concentrating on moving the material, then he's going to get back from this. And um, so, section F levy improvements, onshore materials, the contractor, we held a pre construction meeting. Uh, we gave him a notice to proceed last Monday, and he has been kind of moving on site. He should start hauling dirt uh, sometime later this week, weather permitted. So this is in the area of pump station number seven from Delta Farm Road all the way down to where the Cloverly Levy, the corner is. We're going to do basically crown improvements there, lifting the levy up. Uh, there's no applica pay application this month for this job. On the go to meta pump station, the flood wall, um, sea level construction as a contractor, is actually moving pretty fast. Um, all of those components are prefabricated. He's been putting them up into place. He's got things fitted up. Um, he's starting to do his weld out. Um, they did start working on the ends like you saw in the pictures. So we're going to lift the levee up in that area and we'll put revetment mat over the top. So we do have the change order number one for $26,079.63 in five days of contract time for adding these stiffener plates to the structural that's beams. That's stuff that should have been done in the previous contract, right? That's right. The Corps of Engineers, their as-built drawings showed this stiffener plate on there and it wasn't there. But there was also problems with the dimensions that they gave us on the hospital drawing didn't match what was out in the field. So when we went to fit our structure on there, things didn't line up. So our recommendation was instead of him taking everything down and rebuilding it again, we would just have these plates. So that was, that's our recommendation. Okay, you've heard our recommendation of engineers to add five work days, uh, change order number one to add five days, and $26,079.63 for that project. No wishes, gentlemen. Move on back. Second by Keith. Any discussion? All in favor, think about by saying aye. All right. Aye. Opposed, no. Mr. Collier, I yes. think uh, so. If you kind of answer the question on why, before. Yeah, the court messed up. Right. Well, so, the, it's hard to believe. Mm -hmm. Right. So, wait. <laughs> so, you asked, you asked John if he might. Well, the court did John's job, too. So, I don't know if that's I would say that's why I meant because I knew this would be coming down the line. That's right. I don't know if I would say expect, but it's a possibility. A distinct possibility. Okay. Um, so we also have pay application number four in the amount of one hundred ninety-nine thousand six hundred sixty-eight and sixty-two cents. Uh, we do recommend you pay. Okay. Do you have the recommendation of the to add? Uh, Pay request number four, the amount of one hundred ninety-nine thousand six hundred sixty-eight dollars and sixty-two cents for sea level. Your know, wishes, gentlemen. Move on. Money second by Roland. Any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 There was no motion. All right. On the maintenance of the south floodgates, uh, Circle is the contractor. Uh, they're making good progress on this project. Also, as Window alluded to. Um, they blasted and painted all the pieces, parts. They've got um, uh, all the structure that we had to make repairs on. They've done all of that. They've got the primer on there, and they started painting the top coat on there. They should be weather permitting. They should be finished painting the top coat by the end of next week sometime. Okay. Then after that, they're ready to put them back in. So it is possible, like Wendell said, to have them brought here and be putting them back in the last week of February. So How long is that the time you're looking at to actually reinstall them? Uh, a couple of days. Yeah. Now we did, we do have a change order here also, change order number one for $41,996.99 and four additional days of contract time. 
So when we, we had hinge repairs to be made, that was that bushing I was talking about the last time. Mm -hmm. It basically rotated in the housing and therefore the grease ports were out of alignment. So we wouldn't get any grease in those hinges at all, which was a bad situation. Mm -hmm. So we corrected that. Um, some of the composite fenders were broken. Two of them were broken, so we repaired those. Um, we also had the pantle removal. So we were trying to get the pantle out of the housing that's still at the, at the bottom of the gate structure. We tried to do it for one day, and I think we were putting too much pressure on the pantle. The only way to get it out, I think, is to dewater the whole structure and probably get some hydraulic jacks in there. But we don't recommend doing that at this time. Right. We, we had the divers inspect the bushing on it. Everything's moving like it should move. So our recommendation is to go back and put the gates back on top of it, make sure they're getting grease. And the next schedule in Ernaval of maintenance, you would dewater the whole structure and tend to those Which is 10 years from now. That's right. Now, uh, the other thing is that was really, we could, you know, we waited past 10 years to do the repair work. You know, if everything was working, we didn't solve the problem. But it was actually because of the grease not going down that we decided to just get out this year, let's solve that problem. So that was the main concern when we looked at doing the job. We needed to do it whether it was this year or next year or the year after. But with the grease not working, that was the number one thing I asked Joe to do is find out what's causing the problem. Our guys were doing everything they could to get the grease down there. We've been putting bar saw to clear it out if it was something jammed in there. Nothing worked. And so they found what the problem was. And, and hopefully, uh, you know, get it. Uh, they get back in, we'll get back to normal operation. And then. So with the, with the corrections you made, they will be able to grease that? Yes, sir. Any other questions? So that? you need to approve that change order. Okay, that is uh, change order number one, the amount of $41,996.69 to uh, circle as recommended by engineer Joe Wishes. Moved by Roman, seconded by Keith. Any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. And the uh, contractor also has submitted the application number two in the amount of $141,535.94 and we recommend you approve that. Okay, you've made your recommendation of engineers to pay a circle dredge. Circle dredge and uh, they request them to do the amount of $41,535.94. Your wish, gentlemen. Moved on that, second by Kim. Any discussion? Okay, we have the amount of $41,535.94. Any other discussion? Okay, that is uh, change order number two, the amount of $41,535.94. And we recommend you approve that as recommended by engineer Joe Wishes. To bring us up today. What's, what's the remaining amount that we do know uh, It'll be probably another six hundred thousand dollars or so. Okay. And that would complete yes. more or less. Yeah. Okay, good. Any questions or gentlemen? Thank you, Bill. Thank you. Yeah, GIS, John. Okay, on the AE spy retention project, we are still waiting on the court issue that permit. They told us six to eight weeks ago it was on. I don't know whose desk it is that actually signs it, but it's been on that desk for six to eight weeks. Um, we are continuing discussions with the pipeline companies and Intergy to satisfy their requirements necessary to get around, the, under, or over their facilities. We are also still working with uh, Ray Collins' office about the servitude requirements that we need in that area. Uh, once. We, and we have finished our plans and specifications, so once all that is done, along with the land rights, et cetera, we'll be ready to start advertising whenever y'all are. I know it's not the highest priority for y'all, but we'll be ready when y'all are. The desal flood wall improvements, as Wendell mentioned, we opened bids for phase one of the project on January 29th. Uh, the low Bidder was sea level construction in the amount of $1,648,822. As Wendell noted, that was okay with y'all. Y'all approved that last month. Um, CPRA, we got word on that today that they was okay with that, so we're going to go ahead and send the contract to the contractor tomorrow. Let me ask you a question. If the Corps of Engineers 
would have acceded to, acceded to our request and raised it to the elevation that was requested, how much more money do you think it would have cost? I know if you look at a million and a half, but better than a million and a half now. Just a rough figure. What do you think it would have cost? That's extra steel, basically. It's just extra steel. When they came, what they did back then was they came and basically redid the sidewalls. The concrete structure, they didn't do anything to. They did the, the sidewalls. I would imagine putting that extra, I think we're putting six more feet of steel. It would have cost you know, half a million dollars or something like that. Now no, we still would have had the gap in the middle to, to address. Yeah. And we still got another project on that phase two, which will come in later this year for probably another million and a half dollars. But uh, most of that could have been eliminated by a, a lot of that could have been. Well, yeah. we believe when it was going on, because back then, that's Dr. Katrina, we said, well, we'll raise, keep raising the levees, uh, they were going to take the hard structures. There's an old pump station there, up there. The reason the wall was there was the pump station. If we would have done it, yeah. Now that was money that the Corps had left over from the all, 29 million that was the all of our structures. But they couldn't give away the all. They did not want mm -hmm. to go ahead and deal with the pump station because of fire. Had we done it, we would have, I would have suggested that we look at, forget about the wall, build a levy there, build a new pump station. They spent five million to do it when you see right there. For less than two million, we could have built a new pump station that just moved the same amount of water and had a levee there. Could have trucked in a levee and put a new pump station in for two million. Mm -hmm. So they spent five million and here we are. Spending another two million. Come back with it and, and, and basically it's going to be about three million uh, to mm -hmm. get it all right. Mm -hmm. Now that, I think, like Joe's project will get you up to plus 18, which will get you through for quite a while. Um, we also submitted the final plans and specifications for phase two to CPRA. Well, we actually submitted it to Wendell last week and to CPRA too as well Tuesday. The Golden Meadow boat launch ramp, the project is complete. They were supposed to do their last dress up this morning. So I can't tell you 100% certainty it's complete. We're pretty sure it's complete. We've done the surveys to measure how much material was taken, but we haven't gotten those results yet, so next month y'all will have closeout paperwork, change order, etc. on that project. Uh, the low project, the uh, low quote was $99,976, I'm sorry, $99,976. It's going to go a little bit higher than that because y'all requested to put some additional material at the discharge pipes of pump station number one. So we did that, that's going to cost about $20,000. We expect the change order to be about that much. Uh, D North ramp, we are expecting the final geotechnical report the day after tomorrow. And, which can, and after that, we'll finalize that report and send it off to CPRA, hopefully by the end of the week, so we can get that project going. Uh, the Grand Bayou flood control structure. Make sure I got my notes right on that. For the bypass channel emergency efforts, we've got a pay request in the amount of $32,000 to onshore materials. Okay, you heard a recommendation by our engineer to pay $32,000 to onshore materials uh, for the Grand Bayou Church. Any discussion? All right. Okay, for the flood wall and receiving structure, Wendell showed you, showed you some pictures. We've completed the jacket installations, uh, completed installing the five and seven pile dolphins, began installing the temper guide walls, installed and tested the lifts four and five on the east side surcharge area, that's the levee sections. And the installation has begun on the 30-inch battered pile for the west side flood wall. Again, that was on the pictures Wendell showed earlier. We have pay request number nine in the amount of $752,220.34. You made the pay request number nine in the amount of $752,220.34. Any discussion? Any discussion? Any discussion? To see that. Correct. No mission, gentlemen. Move by rolling, second by G. 
Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 We have a change order number five in the amount of $168,609 plus 33 days uh, for Hurricane Delta efforts. Okay, you were asking, we have to do two separate, right? Correct. Change order number five is the amount of $168,609 to, to uh, mm -hmm. sea level for Hurricane Delta work. So it's a recommendation to move on that second by Mine. Any discussion? All the fifth senior club, I say aye. 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 Okay, you're ready to recognition of engineers to pay C level $168,609 for pay request number 10. We all wish it, gentlemen. Move by peace, second by rolling. Any discussion? All the data signify by saying aye. 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 Almost no. Okay. And now that we've dealt with Hurricane Delta, we have some paperwork for Hurricane Zeta. We have change order number six in the amount of $11,121.34. Next to sea level also. Correct. Uh, you've heard a recommendation of engineers to sea level of pay order. Change order number six in the amount of eleven thousand one hundred twenty-one dollars and thirty per cent for hurricane say to repair. Your wishes moved by Keith, seconded by Rowan. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed no. Motion passes. And now to pay for that $11,000, pay request number 11 in the amount of $11,121.34. And we're going to recommend that you to pay the sea level of the excuse me, $11,121.34. Pay request number 11 for the change order. No wish, gentlemen. We've got a roll in second by Any discussion? All in favor, second by by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. And finally, for Hurricane Zeta, in order to pay us, we've got engineering amendment number five in the amount of $19,512.50 for the Hurricane Zeta efforts. Okay, you read a recommendation to pay GIS engineers amendment number five in the amount of $19,512.50 for engineering service for Hurricane Zeta efforts. The old wishes, gentlemen. Moved by Keith, second by Roland. End of discussion. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Mr. Chairman, you mentioned, can I just interject something before you go this? So, the reason we had to segregate all those various change orders and pay requests, which is a bit tedious for you to go through, is of course we're going to request FEMA reimbursement for just about all, not just about, but all the dollars that you just approved in rapid fashion, each one of those. And in order to make the FEMA paperwork flow correctly, you got to segregate each one of them, and they got to be related to each storm. And everybody knew we had 427 storms this year. so. I know that's a bit tedious, but in order to have the paperwork line up right when we request reimbursement, we got to break them up like that and itemize each one of them separately. So that's why you had to go through all that. Steve, I stuff. can put up all of them as long as it's not coming out of our pocket. There you go. So that's what I'm telling you, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> it's coming out, but it's coming back in. Yeah. Hopefully it's coming back in. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Bring up the issue with John. Does one of the point? You know why? Yeah, so the last Friday, I believe the state uh, CPRA sent an IGA to Salvage and Levy District to reimburse the $2.7 million for the emergency work on Grand Bayou. And Jacob DeGate is reviewing it in the next couple of days. He has like one or two sentences to add. So I don't know if you need board action or not, but that's, that well, is... Well, let's uh, that to be sure. Let's just go ahead and uh, accept uh, either the, the board president or myself. And that's reimbursing that. us for funds we've expended in behalf of the... So let's not take a chance. For the, on the, on the, the okay. Meeting. From the state. He's ready, he's ready the record. only thing we added to it uh, that was not in the original agreement, uh, the original agreement we made with the state when we released the money that once FEMA pays, it would go back into the system. They... I don't know if it was on purpose or what, but it wasn't in there, so we want to make sure it's in there. Okay, to make it official, let's make up a recommendation of which 
who is the general manager of this whole situation. I, I got promoted? <laughs> <laughs> no, no additional pay, not just a title. Oh, just a title? We, we call that a bottom of the range. Yeah, so, yeah. so to authorize uh, the president or Wendell to sign the IGA with CPRA for a reimbursement for Grand Bayou, emergency uh, review, pending the attorney's approval of the language. Wow. Okay. I read the recommendation, if you understand it, I need a motion. <laughs> Second by Molly in the discussion. All in favor, say goodbye by saying aye. Aye. Almost no. Motion can be done. Move it on. Now can we go to the Yeah. Uh, okay. And y'all saw a lot of the pictures still on the uh, progress of the barge gate fabrication. And as Reggie pointed out, we have 72 inch tubes in there. Uh, basically, after a storm, when the still high on the outside, it's really tough to pull that barge open when you need to get it open. Mm -hmm. So we open that to, to let the water flow through, equalize a bit so it can be opened a little easier and save some wear and tear in the winches. We also have pay request number four in the amount of $349,671.63. Okay, you had a recommendation in the district. C level, pay request number four, in the amount of $349,671.63. No wishes, gentlemen. Move by roll and second by roll. Any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion to Anything else, John? Finally, at the hurt, let me go a little bit more on Hurricane Delta efforts. Uh, the emergency barge is out. The, the repairs to the Miami barge are just about complete. You know, some touch-up work and stuff like that. And as Reggie mentioned, all the sandbags were taken off and they were put along reach jail, so. And as I understand, we're being donated the pipes, the, pile, the pilings uh, that we have to transport at our cost to do the work. I just got a text message from Miss Lucy, so when you need to call, she's saying, they request the pipes be moved to the barge instead of a truck, so you may want to call Yeah, we're at the we'll work up enough to take care of it. Yeah, yeah I'm not sure she's working. But the main fact is we're getting the, those barges courtesy of the uh, terrible, terrible weather. Yeah. Okay, thank you, gentlemen. Okay, uh, and I'm finally finished. I'm finally finished. finished. You're finished. Thank God. Thank God. You, you, you're about to find a truck camp on that industry. Okay. Let me show the deal. All right, on the VDR, the Levy Improvement Project from Base on Pump Station to Golden Meadow. Our net contract to Pontchartrain Partners is getting ready to start up on the final round of work. Uh, that'll take them about a month and they'll be done with that. That's in Golden Meadow. On the Sea South Levy Improvement, the contract to Grand Isle Shipyard is continuing with construction. Work is going fine and we're recommending approval of their pay request number nine in the amount of $145,442.06. What is that amount again? I haven't got it tomorrow. It's uh, $145,442.06. What, what, okay, that's pay request number nine? Yes, sir. And that is to? In Grand Isle Shipyard. Grand Isle Apache Train, no? Okay. No, it's a uh, Grand Isle Shipyard. Yeah. I'm on the second item first, in the agenda. Okay. I'm, I'm sorry. I'll still refer you. Okay, so your pay request number nine to Grand Isle, uh, so shipyard and construction, whatever you call it. We have payment request number nine, the amount of forty-five thousand four hundred forty-two dollars and six cents. Your wish, gentlemen. I move. Moved by Max, seconded by Keith. Any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Okay. All right. I'm going to to the Gulf Reach L. Um, those plans and specifications for the levy construction from Apache Forum out to Grand Bayou are currently being reviewed by the CPRA. And we do have some additional information they requested that we'll be sending them over the next week. And then they've indicated that their review is going to take about a month before we can start advertising for bid. So at the next meeting, I'll be requesting um, approval to advertise pending final review of CPRA that's still ongoing. Okay. Do you think they can approve it before? I don't think so. Okay. I, I, don't, I really don't think so. Okay. Uh, last item is the La Rose Flood on Height Improvement. So this is. Um, adding some additional sheets or steel material similar to some of the other projects that Wendell showed you pictures of um, in the Rose area along the, the intracoastal from basically a, a little bit past the corner of Bayou Lafourche and the intracoastal uh, behind the Holy Rosary Church all the way out to the 308 overpass. The Corps had built that wall up to uh, an elevation of about 10, now it's about 9.5. 
we're building it up to 13.5. Um, so we received bids on that project last, uh, last week on February 4th. We had 17 bids on the project. Um, our estimate was 1,075,000. The apparent low bidder was Pisciola Construction Company and it was significantly under our estimate, it was 745,000. Um, they have submitted a sworn statement requesting that their bid be withdrawn. I reviewed the, the public bid law and the information they provided, and I find it to be in order um, with their request to remove their, their bid from consideration. It's ultimately a board decision, uh, but my recommendation is gonna be to to approve their request to withdraw that bid. And our uh, attorney just gave me the nod that he had a whole couple of He, he has provided all the guidance on, on this. And, uh, no, because you're not a lawyer. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Mr. That's President, right. we have reviewed it through uh, Neil and Wendell discussing it and, and, and a review of the public bid law, and we, we would agree with our, uh, our contractors. So this, this would revert us to the um, the second bidder, sea level construction for eight hundred and seventy-six thousand six hundred dollars, still significantly under the, the original um, estimate. Uh, but this project is is being funded by the state of Louisiana. We have facility planning involved. They specifically asked to be um, involved in the review of the bid prior to the board officially awarding this project. So my recommendation is going to be that the board gives President Collin the authority mm -hmm. to take action on both of these items separately, pending review by the state of Louisiana. So I think the state needs to chime in on both of these issues. The withdrawal of Pisciola's bid as one matter and the awarding to sea level construction as a second matter. So my recommendation is President Collie be given the authority to uh, authorize this. Or Wendell, yeah, if y'all want to do President Collie or Wendell pending a, a approval from the state of Louisiana. So the first one is for the withdrawal of the show of construction. Uh, his, his bid was 745000 So Should you ask your okay. Yes, sir. You've read the recommendation. I hope you understand it, because I think I understand it. Mm -hmm. That we allow them to draw their To withdraw their bid from consideration. Yeah. No question, gentlemen. Move my mind, second by Mac. In discussion. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion. And the second item is going to be awarding to sea level construction for eight hundred seventy-six thousand six hundred, uh, pending approval by the state of Louisiana, and that'll give President Collier or Wendell the authority to do that. Okay, you heard the recommendation of engineers to give Wendell I the authority to award the bid to the next low bidder in the amount of eight hundred seventy-six thousand six hundred dollars. The all wish you gentlemen. Moved by Rowan, second by Rowan. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. That's what you're looking at present. basically do the same thing here that you did with doing the older letters. It's very you? similar. Yeah. Okay, gentlemen. Any questions of Neil? Thank you. Okay, Delta Consultants, Mitch. The only thing I, I want to add is, is I've been working very hard to try to make sure there's a timely certification of invoices. Um, and if something does slip through the cracks, please make sure you call me. Everybody in my office is instructed to jump on it immediately uh, and try to preempt any cash flow issues we may have and not prevent you from doing the work that you need to do. So. And we want to tell you, Mary's been doing a great job catching up and did a heck of a lot of extra work on keeping track of all that. You've been coming through very well and the state's come through very well. At this point, so it's out. Let's just stay, I mean, sometimes the state can fall behind and we'll just try to stay on top of things. Uh, but other than that, that's all I have to add right now. It's like trying to hurt cats. <laughs> yeah. Okay, any questions of Mitch? So I've got a couple projects on reach cater report on Mr. Chairman. So the first one is what we call a phase one emergency rehabilitation. This is the lowest two miles of the reach cake levy work. Again, this project is complete. We're in a clear lean period. Uh, Lowland is our contractor. The only thing we have on the agenda is they submitted a rather small pay request. This is not their retainage. This is the last invoice. Uh, before retainage uh, in the amount of $12,540, and we would recommend paying pay application number four. Okay, we the recommendation of the engineers to pay uh, low land construction uh, pay application number four in the amount of $12,540. Your wishes, gentlemen. Moved by Keith, second by Mac. In discussion, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Please <coughs> no. 
So we'll move on to the next piece of reach K, which is the shaping work that I referred to when we were looking at the, uh, the uh, pictures a little while ago. So we've had sea level out there shaping plus or minus four and a half miles of levee uh, for a few months now. They've been doing great work. Again, if you haven't been out there, it really looks like a levee because it's supposed to look like a big pile of dirt. It looked like uh, six or eight months ago. Uh, we got a couple of action items, and, and by the way, the, the work is continuing. They're not finished with that yet. Gonna, they're going to be shaping for another month or so, and then we're actually going to use them as dirt is hauled under the next agenda item. The next item is our hauling contract. As that dirt is delivered under the hauling contract, we're going to continue to use them under the shaping contract to move it around and shape it properly. Uh, we do have two agenda items. The first one is a proposed encroachment agreement with Williams Pipeline. This is the discovery line which passes through Reach K. Uh, Williams has been great to work with in the last couple of years along Reach K, but we are now about the first time building a levee on top of the line. Again, when we were dredging and placing material, we didn't have an encroachment agreement because we were just putting some material and kind of leaving it there. But now we're going to put it with real equipment, bulldozers, track trucks, and build a levee. So they've asked us to, uh, asked us solidly, let me just, excuse me, to execute an encroachment agreement. I believe the request window is to get approval of this agreement pending legal review is how we want to do it today because we don't have legal concurrence as of today. So the request for you, Mr. Chairman, is to approve this agreement or give authority to, to you or Wendell to sign it pending legal review. Well, ba basically, for the benefit of the board, would you please explain to us exactly what we're obligating ourselves to do here? So, so what it, uh, this, this encroachment agreement is Williams Pipeline granting this board or your contractors authority to enter on their pipeline right away and conduct activities, in this case, build a levy, okay? My engineering staff has been in communication with Williams Pipeline technical staff about what kind of level we're going to build, what kind of equipment we're going to use, and they run those through a, I mean, they do some calculations to make sure we're not going to overload the pipe, right, so we don't break the pipeline. Okay. So the activity that they will be giving you permission to do is to access the right of way with track trucks, basically with dozers, and to build a levy on that line. Your obligation, to answer your question, is to do the work that you describe and not, frankly, break the pipe. Okay? You may have, you may have to put a air bridge over or something yeah. like that. You may have to adapt some of your construction methods to, to do it in the right way, but our, my staff and their staff have been in communication to figure out what's the best way to do that. And we take liability, so yeah, we will transfer and, and ask Reggie to look at it because they will. They will if something they will should happen, us on it. that liability comes to us, and we transfer to Terminal Levy. Okay, mm -hmm. so we look at them; they have to come and say, "Yeah, that is an agreement we're willing to agree to." The agreement will say that we're responsible to yeah. win, but they're responsible to us. Mr. Right. Attorney, is that how you understand it? Yes, Mr. President. Okay. Okay. Thank you. We need a motion. So, so we do need a motion. I believe all of us. Approve this, uh, all of this agreement. Yeah. Okay. We bring a recommendation of our engineers. So there's an agreement that uh, we do work it out with Williams Construction. Williams, oh, excuse me, Williams, the pipeline. Yeah, Williams pipeline. Discovery pipeline. Your wishes. We move on back. Second by Rowan. Any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. So we do have another action item, Mr. Chairman, which is pay application number four in the amount of $118,437 and one penny to sea level for their work on this shaping contract, which we recommend approval. Okay, we we'll make a recommendation of our engineers that we pay uh, sea level $118,437 and one cent. And one penny. For the for work to be able to do wishes. Moved by Keith, second by Roll in the discussion. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion carries. So, so we don't have uh, any items related to uh, number C on the agenda. We'll move down to D, which is our supply and delivery of material lost to Hurricane Barry. This is the FEMA funded project where they're delivering dirt to reach K. Um, this is the, the contract amount is 55,000 cubic yards. They've delivered about 10,000 yards to reach K since they started work. Uh, again, just for the board's understanding, some of the dirt is coming in from the south via truck down Pornishan, Oak Point Road, and being driven on the reach K. Some of it is coming in from the north, being delivered by truck to uh, Larissa's dock uh, off of Burger Rose, and then they put it on a barge, they barge it down to reach K. So we got delivery going on two different, two different methods at this time, which was always anticipated. Uh, they've obviously they live in about 10,000 yards. They got about uh, 45,000 yards to go, so they'll be doing this for several more months. Okay. 
Um, we do have a pay application on the agenda. You got it ready? Okay. You want to do it? You want to do it in the dimly room? That guy came and operated the phone. <laughs> so we do have a pay application, Mr. Chairman, related to the material delivery contract. That pay application is number two, in the amount of two hundred sixteen thousand four hundred seventy-seven dollars and forty-five cents, and we do recommend approval of that pay application. Okay, uh, you heard the recommendation that you need to pay. CML construction application of the two in the amount of two hundred sixteen thousand four hundred seventy-seven dollars and forty-five cents. Your wish, gentlemen. Will I roll the second by roll? Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed no. Okay. So I have one more agenda item, and that is uh, our FEMA program management contract that we have with the levy board. Uh, again, we're going to assist you in getting reimbursement for those six, eight agenda items you approved earlier in this meeting, all the Zeta, Delta, et cetera, mm -hmm. items, and the installation and removal of the temporary barge, which totals about $2.7, $2.8 million. So uh, we need a contract amendment for our contract with you to help get all that paperwork straight and get your reimbursement request in and hopefully get you reimbursed quickly. So we've requested an amendment to our engineering agreement for those services in the amount of $25,000, which I believe... Do you really expect us to pay an additional $25,000? Uh, I'm going to tell you another thing, Mr. <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Mr. Chairman. What you'll, what you'll really appreciate is, if we do this the right way, the $25,000 is also reimbursed. Well, there you go. <laughs> Seven, 75% of it, really. It's not all of it, but it's even better. It's a, if we do it the right way, we'll even get this, some of this money back. Yeah, the win. That's the only thing. I know you've got more You heard the recommendation. Pretty much. Will you let me move approval as well? I'll move approval if you let me. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed no. Motion. Can I think of these stats too? Go ahead. So Mr. President, on the Reach K fifty-five thousand FEMA contract. Uh the that is really double funded. The C, the CPRA has a million and a half dollars of of capital outlay for this project. The base bid was a little over one point six something million. Five, something like the yesterday or or I understand as of Friday, the pay request from last month was submitted to FEMA. Once FEMA starts paying, then I think you have a will get reimbursed very quickly because it hasn't been obligated. But just for the future, for next month, I just want to mention that this 55,000 cubic yards is enough material to get all the reach K to about eight or eight and a half feet, except for 2,000 feet. It's going to take 12,000 more cubic yards. So once FEMA starts paying, we hopefully this contract is still active and we'll be recommending about a 300 or so thousand dollar uh, change order to get it all the dirt we need to get K all it. To be reimbursed by capital outlay. That's right. Towards the end of the program. Yes, sir. Okay, I have a question. Earlier, a comment was made about uh, the uh, pipe, which you also very graciously gave to us, that we could be moving by truck, but now we're talking about having to move it by barge. I think we're going to do it over here. Is there additional costs involved in that? Okay, here's the deal. Yeah, a lot more. Okay, what we're going to do, I will give her a call and talk to her and assure her that we will maintain her room in a passable condition. It should take more than a couple of days, and that we'll go ahead and get it back in better shape than it was before. Uh, I, that's what I plan to talk to you. But we're talking about really the reason the price of putting on board. So it's worth, it's worth for us to maintain the road, which is what we do anyway. That's part of our contracts that we maintain the road. It may cost you one or two loads of limestone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But whatever, whatever it takes, it's going to be a, a hell of a lot cheaper than putting it's on board. Yeah. Okay, so and where are they at right now? Well, the parts are there. Use, they're at the, they're at the top. So the top is there. The board should yeah. go there. But it's uh, it, you yeah, you're right there, LA24, right there, the bridge. Yeah, right. Just bring it across and bring it to uh, our, our, our site. Well, that room one, and you're we're talking about uh, there's also some beams involved in there, too. Well, besides the that, they haven't. The beams, beams are at home. The beams are at home, man. Well, yeah. Well, and you have it. You're going to give with the beams, too, huh? No beams. <laughs> oh, that's the pipe and no beams? I got a deal for you. We're gonna give you the pipe, but we're gonna sell you the beams at half price. <laughs> <laughs> what determines the price? Definitely <laughs> 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 
what he, the original price is a million dollars, but I'm going to do it for 500000 just to be nice. Would that be enough pipe to do the whole job, or would we need additional pipe? Well, to we've been talking to the, the work we need for the flood heat, or the lot we're trying to build. We might use them for that instead of using them for the protection of the wall. Because it might be, might pay us more uh, to be able to do all the costs on, on building the boards to make it, I mean, I'll say boards, the lot. Use them. So we're looking at a couple of good uses options. for it. Number one, we just have to thank mm -hmm. uh, Reggie mm -hmm. and Kevin Wall that been working with us on this. It's a, a tremendous benefit. Well, they have to be very big. And, and uh, no, but, a little bit more. <laughs> but we will have no, lots of, no, we will have some meetings to discuss to make sure we use it the best way possible. Right. Now, uh, if we switch it from doing that stuff there to doing the stuff at the, the, the locks, uh, Will that antagonize the Corps of Engineers? How hard will they come down on us? Because we do have an obligation to do something there to protect yeah. that. Well, they, they, they said when we did the uh, original work, they said uh, you will agree to do it, and yeah, we'll do it. Now, when they have a put of pressure on The us. beams were originally there. We got them from West Jefferson Levy District, left over from Katrina. They sit in the yard at home. So, they're not here with them to sell them to us. No, well, they don't get them for free. They got them. That's the TV stuff. But they did. But they spent a lot of money bringing it over there. Yeah. And uh, again, I'm just going to change. But we are, I, I mean, we do have our engineers that are going to go back and, and look at the yard and do some issues. We'll be talking to them a lot. And actually, also on the low blur structure that Neil is designing, we possibly we'll use some of those same beams to lower the cost of the, uh, of the low blur bridge and, and structure. We think there's enough beams, maybe not sheet pile, but enough beams to build a, the structure of that bridge and, and we need to build it. So. You know, Reggie, I hope you I know you understand the rhythm I'm doing here. The strict oh, yeah, yeah. basis. We've got great cooperation between our two living districts. Yeah. And and North That's North why North. I brought into the North 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 yard and let him live. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and that? He brought me to the yard where they have all the uh, 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 smiles and uh, is there some other stuff? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 the That's right. why I'm not sending the engineer. Yeah. 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 He was talking, but he, we couldn't hear Daniel. He's talking right now. Oh. When it turns green, but it, well, what? it's not going to turn. How about the box? Are you afraid we need the box? No, that's for the microphone. He can send me the way Okay. Well, I can get him to call my cell phone. Well, he didn't read this. Then. Yeah, he said there's not much, just a couple of items, but he said it could wait. Okay. okay. We'll move on down a little bit. Uh, Permits, right to wave the mission. There's none uh, turned in, right, Mary? No problem. Uh, so, no, I didn't see no. it. Right, see okay, board attorney, Mr. Attorney. Okay, Finance Committee. Uh, Mr. President, Finance Committee met and reviewed all invoices and recommended that he paid as, as presented. Okay, your recommendation of the chairman, Mr. Bittman, Monty, the second by Keith, excuse me, Mac, uh, that would bill invoices as presented. No wish to do it. One bid signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. Motion carries. Okay, uh, any old business? Any old business? Any new business? Any new business? If not, we need a motion. Move by Mac, second by Matt and Mark Money. We have a chair. All the chairs signify by saying aye. 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 A